Welcome back to Wrong Sports. This is part three of my deep dive series where I am checking out a winning streak in college football. I am going over the final seasons of Army's epic winning streak during the final years of World War II and leading out of World War II. Those are the seasons that I'm going over now. So if you have not checked out part one or part two, you can check that out here. I put the link above. But if you have checked out part one and part two, let me give you a quick heads up as to who is coming back for the 1946 season. Doc Blanchard, Glenn Davis, they will be coming back this season as well as Arnold Tucker, their quarterback who really started to get into his groove in the 1945 season, as well as half of their All-American line with Joe Steffi and Bill Yeoman mostly running the show, playing the role of end on their team, and also Doc Blanchard's roommate, Barney Poole. He'll also come up in some very big defensive situations over the season. But missing on this team this year was their third leading rusher from last year, and that was Shorty McWilliams. He had eight touchdowns last year, and he was looking like a Heisman candidate, but he just did not want to stay in the academy anymore, especially with the war long over. And with the war over, that means all service teams were pretty much done with in the 1946 season. You will not be hearing any more about the V5 or the V12 program. I might mention it here or there, especially when teams get really decimated with the V5 and the V12 program leaving their school. Also this year, Army will be playing 10 games, which will be significant, and they will be playing only colleges. They won't be playing the Coast Guard or any Army Air Force team or no random team like that. Just colleges only. But let's get started with game one as they played familiar foe Villanova at home. This year was a little bit different though as the wet weather in New York caused a few fumbles which also caused an injury to Doc Blanchard but they still both managed to score a touchdown before Blanchard got his heel stuck in the mud and was tackled and was taken out of the game. The final was 35 to nothing but it could have been a lot worse if the weather was a lot nicer and Blanchard didn't get injured. Blanchard would have x-rays on his leg and most thought he would be done for the year, but he would dress for the next game, but more on that in a second. The next game was versus Oklahoma, who had Jim Tatum coaching. Also, Oklahoma pretty much used the same offense as Army did. Blake tried something early, as he dressed Blanchard for the game, but instead of using him, he just had him on the sideline to try to cycle Oklahoma out. The ruse didn't really work, as Oklahoma had a really good team, and they managed to recruit many veterans from World War II before the season, and because of that, Oklahoma managed to score first and take a rare lead over Army. That lasted until about a minute before the half, as Army was passing a lot more to try to confuse Oklahoma, and it finally worked as Tucker threw a 46-yard touchdown to Davis. Army would struggle to get anything going without Blanchard in this game, but after a blocked punt, they were set up for a short drive that was capped by a short run by their backup running back, Ugg Fusun. Oklahoma had two drives to tie this game as they made it to the Army three-yard line, but they were then intercepted by Arnold Tucker, who took it back for a fourth-quarter touchdown to seal this game 21-7. Army was going for their 20th straight win as they would have their third straight game at home, this time versus Cornell. Cornell was being coached by Ed McKeever, who knew Army quite well as he filled in as the Notre Dame coach in 1944 when Army wiped the floor with Notre Dame by over 50 points. Within a minute, Glenn Davis scored on a 64-yard run. Cornell would be able to eventually tie the game in the first quarter and hold that tie to the second quarter, but as the game went on, Davis would score three more touchdowns on two rushing touchdowns and one on a lateral after a pass. Davis was taken out when Army had a 39-7 lead, but Cornell got to within 39-21 in the fourth quarter before Army would score one final touchdown and the final was 46-21. Davis, of course, started in this game with four touchdowns, and since Blanchard didn't play, Army had to pass the ball a little bit more. Like I've been mentioning, they've been doing it a lot more in the 1946 season. So that set up another great player on their team, quarterback Arnold Tucker, who was also a great runner, but he was also really good on kick and punt returns, and he had a 79-yard kickoff return and a 78-yard punt return in this game. Up next, though, Army would have to venture not only outside of the Northeast, but they would have to go to to the Midwest as they would go to Ann Arbor to play Michigan. And Michigan was probably the closest team to have beaten Army last year, or at least at all over the streak. And since it was at home, it was a bigger help to Michigan. 
Michigan was coming into this game 2-0. They were ranked number four after shutting out Indiana and squeaking by Iowa. Army had never traveled to Michigan, with their farthest game west being in 1934 when they went to Illinois. And this game was on campus in the big house in front of 85,000 fans. But even though Army had their first real road test, they would play Blanchard for the first time since week one, so they would have a little bit of an advantage here. Michigan would score first, but before the first quarter was over, Davis would tie the game at seven with a 58-yard touchdown run. Michigan had Army's number for the rest of the first half and most of the second half, as their players from last year had the experience and were also bigger to stand up to Army's offense and defense. Along with that, Army had a pretty big injury in this game as their quarterback Arnold Tucker was down, but don't worry, Glenn Davis just took over for him and shined as he completed a big 45-yard pass to Blanchard and then threw a short touchdown pass after that to take the 13-7 lead for Army. Michigan would score a touchdown just before the half and block the extra point to keep it a tie at half. The second half, though, was brutal with both teams not being able to score until the fourth quarter when Army drove 76 yards on 11 plays and Blanchard punched it in for a touchdown and Army would kick the extra point to make it 20-13. The rest of the fourth quarter had Michigan on two long drives into the Army zone with their closest chance coming with a minute left as Michigan was on the Army 10-yard line. Michigan was throwing more to conserve time, but then they threw it into the end zone and was intercepted by a turning Arnold Tucker to conserve the 20-13 win for Army. This game was pretty unusual for Army because they were walking a tightrope all game and they had to use their passing game a lot more. Glenn Davis was 7 for 8 in this game with 168 yards and one touchdown. Plus Arnold Tucker threw for 43 yards and Army had their first 200-yard passing date during the streak. Davis would end this game with two total touchdowns and over 230 yards of total offense. Army would now return home to play the 3-0 Columbia Lions, and they were led by a great passing game with a future NFL player in Bill Suiaki. 25,000 fans would show up to see a masterclass by Blanchard, who was back at full strength after an injury in week one, as he would score four touchdowns in this game. He ran for three touchdowns and returned a kickoff return for 92 yards, doing all of this before the start of the fourth quarter, while Davis had one touchdown, but it it was a big 66-yard touchdown run. Blanchard and Davis would make the game 28-0 by half, and then it was 35-0 before Columbia scored, but Blanchard's final touchdown, the kickoff return, sealed the 48-14 win. Duke was up next, and they would meet at the Polo Grounds before 59,000 fans as Army looked for their 24th straight win. The game was a weird one for Army because Duke had a great line that beat down Blanchard and Davis all game, so they just barely had over 100 yards rushing for the game. Blanchard had 22 yards rushing on 21 carries, while Davis had 70 yards rushing. Army instead used their passing game as Arnold Tucker threw for three touchdowns, with two touchdowns going to Davis, giving Davis his 55th touchdown of his college career. The defense allowed Duke nothing, and Army had their first shutout in over a month, winning 19 to nothing. Army's winning ways would keep going as they came home for a game versus West Virginia, and it would be a big one as future president, but now general Dwight D. Eisenhower was in attendance for this game. But it wasn't big enough for Coach Blake to show up, as he was out scouting the Navy-Notre Dame game, leaving Andy Gustafson to coach for the third year in a row. The defense was the star in this game, as they stopped six West Virginia drives that got into the Army end, while the offense eventually scored for them. The scoring would happen from the passing game again as Arnold Tucker threw two touchdowns, one to Davis, while Blanchard pitched in the third touchdown to give Army the 19-0 win and set them up for a big matchup versus Notre Dame. A new year and a new game that would be called the game of the century in 1946. It was the Army Notre Dame game. That was due to Notre Dame coming into this game drastically different from the year before. That was due to the war now officially being over, so Johnny Lujak would return to the starting lineup for Notre Dame. He was a big part of that 1943 national championship team. Along with that, they got a really good transfer in George Connor, who would win the Outland Trophy later in the year 
and they would get their legendary coach Frank Leahy back after he served in World War II. And he came back to coach this team to a 5-0 record where they scored over four touchdowns a game and the previous week destroyed Navy. The game was being played at Yankee Stadium, and of course there was a big crowd there. 75,000 was in attendance. The game was between two great defenses too, so scoring was tough, with Army getting to the Notre Dame 15 but not being able to score, and Blake's thinking that field goals were useless, instead went for it and didn't get it. The second quarter was very exciting too, as Notre Dame traveled on an 88-yard drive. They got all the way to the Army 4-yard line. The Army defense only allowed Notre Dame to get two two yards on four plays, and Notre Dame didn't go for a field goal, so it was 0-0 zero to zero at half. After the half, the most famous play of the game would happen as Army handed it off to Blanchard, who finally broke through the Notre Dame line and raced into the open field. He was past the 50 now, and he got to the Notre Dame 37-yard line before Johnny Lujak made the game-saving tackle in the open field to save what would definitely be a touchdown. It was the only time many in attendance had ever seen anyone tackling Blanchard in the open field. The only person to do that was Glenn Davis, and it was in practice. After that happened, the crowd was in it, and then when future Notre Dame coach Terry Brennan intercepted Army near the goal line to stop the drive, it got even bigger. Army would then get closer in the fourth quarter, but got intercepted to end the drive. Neither team could score, but they did have a lot of chances, and the game ended in a 0-0 tie. It would end Army's winning streak at 25 games, but now they were unbeaten in 26 straight games, so the streak will continue. Blanchard and Davis were held to 50 and 30 yards rushing respectively, and Notre Dame actually outgained Army in the game in rushing and total yardage. The game was a great game, but it didn't have the outcome that most people wanted due to there not being any scoring and also there not being overtime yet. But with the tie, Army would be number one as they went to Philly to play Penn. Penn was ranked in the top five. They were five and one. They were scoring at least five touchdowns in each of their wins, so they were still really good. Penn was bringing back all of their war veterans from the previous year. Like I mentioned, Chuck Ben Derrick was still there. So they were thinking that they could hang in this game with Army. And it definitely showed in the first quarter as Army couldn't score and Blanchard and Davis were in check. But once the second quarter started, Davis would score twice on passes from Tucker. And then in the third quarter, Davis was responsible for the third touchdown after lateraling it to another end for another touchdown to make it 20 to nothing. Blanchard would finally get in the end zone for his only touchdown. Davis would then sustain an injury as he got a knee to the head halfway through the game, so he missed a quarter or two, but still managed to throw another touchdown pass in the fourth quarter when he came back to give them a 34-7 win. Even though Penn scored, it was on a blocked punt, and Penn only had 10 first downs in the game. So Army was rolling now, they were back to their dominating ways after that tie with Notre Dame, and they were heading to Philly to play Navy. Navy was coming into this game the opposite of what they were last year. They were 1-7 coming into this game after winning their first game 7-0 over Nova, and then losing their next seven but not really losing terribly as they were within one possession in four of those losses. A hundred thousand people would show up to this game again, as did the president, but many were thinking it was going to be a blowout as Army was favored by four touchdowns. Navy would prove that even though they were one in seven, in rivalry games, anything could happen. And Navy was proving that as they got in the Army zone twice, but they just couldn't get any points. Then Army would finally score first after Davis caught a 46-yard pass and then got a pitch out for a 13-yard score. Navy wasn't giving up though, as they would score a touchdown on the next drive, missing the extra point, so they were down by one. But immediately after that, Army would respond, as Blanchard got a 52-yard touchdown run to make it 14-6. Finally, after getting the ball back on a Bill Yeoman interception, Davis would throw a touchdown pass to Blanchard to make it 21-6. The last touchdown was significant, as it was the fifth and final touchdown, though, that Blanchard and Davis were able to share together. More more on that in just a moment. Being down 21 to 6, Navy would score, but not able to convert on a two point conversion. And then Blake made the error of going for it on his own 35 yard line instead of punting it and making Navy go for another long field. Instead, they gave Navy another short field 
they took advantage, scoring a touchdown, but again not being able to get any extra points, so it was now 21-18 to late in the game. Blake and the Army squad weren't able to end it just yet, as Navy got one more chance and there was less than a minute to go. It was first and goal on the Army 40-yard line now, and there were seconds to go. If Navy got in the end zone, it would be a huge upset, but Navy wouldn't be able to go anywhere on first and second down and then be called for a penalty to set them back to the eight yard line. Navy had one more play with a second to go, but were stopped at the one foot line by Barry Poole and Army got their ninth victory of the year and were now unbeaten in 28 straight games. So again, rivalry games are tough and it really got to Army in this one. But after the season, the AP poll, which was the most respected poll at that time, picked Notre Dame as the number one team and Army as number two. But Army was picked number one by a few, but Notre Dame is usually recognized as the national champion this year. The reason for Notre Dame jumping over Army though was because Notre Dame was more dominant in their last games, plus they also had five shutouts to Army's four, that was counting the 0-0 tie on each other. But before we get to the 1947 season, Glenn Davis would finally get the Heisman Trophy that he probably should have gotten a couple of years ago. As he had over 1,000 scrimmage yards this season, he had 13 touchdowns, 7 rushing touchdowns, 6 receiving touchdowns, 4 touchdowns passes with almost 400 passing yards. And these touchdowns would give him 59 total touchdowns over three seasons at Army with 43 rushing touchdowns, 14 receiving, two on punt return, as well as passing for over 850 yards and five touchdowns total. Davis, of course, also has the record that is currently standing and, like I mentioned, probably won't get broken as he has 11 and a half yards per carry in 1944 and also has an 8 and a half yards per carry over his Army career. Davis was so good on defense, too, as he also had 14 interceptions and, of course, scored a couple of times on defense. But Glenn Davis would graduate with his Heisman Trophy in June of 1947 and was sought by all pro teams and leagues but couldn't go as he had to serve his three years. He was offered $75,000 by the All-American Football Conference's Brooklyn Dodgers and was drafted by the Lions in the 1947 draft but didn't go. Davis did serve until 1950, mostly in Korea. He would eventually, though, make it to the NFL in the 1950 season with the LA Rams, making it to the 1950 Pro Bowl, but he would get injured the next year, eventually retiring from football in 1953. Davis was trying to leave the service early as he asked to leave several times to play professionally, but was denied. He did end up making some money while serving as he did film the Spirit of West Point movie with Blanchard. For for which both of them made $25,000. It came out in October of 1947. I'll mention that in just a little bit. Doc Blanchard, though, also graduated in June of 1947. He scored 38 touchdowns in his career, 26 rushing, 7 receiving, and 4 on interception returns, plus 1 on a kickoff return. Blanchard would have over 2,000 total scrimmage yards throughout his three years, but he was injured a few games in 1946, remember that? Uh, getting a majority of his touchdowns and yards in his Heisman winning 1945 season. Blanchard was drafted third overall by the Steelers in 1946, but he couldn't get furloughed by the Army to play with them in 1947. He didn't try too much for football after that, and instead he had a long career in the Air Force and flew over 100 missions during the Vietnam War. Along with the Heisman winners leaving, Barney Poole, Arnold Tucker, and Hank Foldberg were also not going to be on the team in the 1947 season. Due to those losses, Blake had to use a bunch of new guys on offense, and he started the 1947 season with Andy Gustafson's nephew Bill as starting quarterback. He would also use Arnold Galifa, who will be important in their next streak in the next couple of years, which I might talk about in a future episode. Plus, running the ball, he would have a bunch of new runners, as he would use Elwin Rowan and Winfield Scott. On the line, they would luckily still have Bill Yeoman and Joe Steffi back, but otherwise they would have a lot of first-time starters. 
All right, but let's kick off the 1947 season now. Army's on a 28-game unbeaten streak, and they're going to be playing Villanova at home. Villanova came in going 6-4 and four the previous season, but the three times Army had played them during the streak, Nova didn't even score a point. And the game started that way, with Army's new-look offense not being able to do much, but also they weren't able to score at all either. After that, Army would just move the ball by running, as Gustafson wasn't the best passer but he was a pretty good runner, and he would take the ball in for the first score to make it 7 to nothing. And that's how it kept going into the second half as Army continued to run, but they did manage to get into the end zone using Winfield Scott to make it 13 to nothing. Nova would once again struggle to move the ball and didn't score for the fourth consecutive time, and Army was at 29 straight unbeaten. Army would stay at home to play a brand new team again, this time it would be Colorado. 21,000 fans would show up to see Army run for 358 yards using 19 ball carriers. Along with all the ball carriers, they also had six touchdown scorers, with Elwin Rowan scoring two touchdowns in a 47 to nothing drumming. This game gave Army 30 games in a row unbeaten. Their defense was great. With Yeoman and Steffi running it, it was the reason that this streak continues. Up next, they would head to New York City to Yankee Stadium, where 65,000 fans would show up to see Army play the undefeated, number 5 ranked Illinois. And the game went like the Army-Notre Dame game from last year, as Army couldn't score and didn't really get close to the end zone except for one time late in the fourth quarter. Otherwise, they struggled to move the ball, and everyone was thinking the streak could end here. Illinois had their best chance as they were lined up for a 30-yard field goal before halftime, but the kick sailed right, and it stayed 0-0 at half. Army's passing game did nothing with four incompletions and relied heavily on the rushing attack, which did get 162 yards, which is pretty considerably low. Fortunately, Army's defense fended off Illinois all game as they got over 200 total yards, but Illinois couldn't score on them, so it ended 0-0 zero to, zero to preserve the unbeaten streak with another tie. After that close call, Army would come back to play VPI, who are now known as Virginia Tech. Army's offense started slow, but it was scoreless until the second quarter when Elwin Rowan would finally score, followed by Scott, and then they got one more before halftime as Army quarterback Galifa threw a touchdown pass, and it was starting to look like he was going to be the quarterback of the future. Army would make the lead bigger as Galifa would score again in the third quarter, and Army would end up scoring six touchdowns and once again not let in a touchdown as they would win 40 to nothing. Army now riding a 32-game unbeaten streak. They are now 3-0-1 on the season, but they would have to travel to New York City. This time, though, they wouldn't be traveling to a neutral site like the Polo Grounds or Yankee Stadium. They would actually be traveling to a college stadium. They would be going to Baker Field to play Columbia. Army dominated Columbia last year, but Columbia scored 14 points on the great Army team and were bringing back a lot of their team, as well as their great pass catcher, Bill Swiaki. Army would score first as Galifa snuck in to make it 7 to nothing, and in the second quarter, they added to that with a Rowan touchdown run, and it was 13 to nothing. And the game was starting to look like it was going to fall apart for Columbia. But then they eventually scored on the next possession, but with seconds left in the half, Elwin Rowan would push in another Army touchdown to make their lead 20 to 7. The battle went back and forth in the third quarter, but no one could score. Starting in the fourth quarter, though, Columbia started to go all for it. They started to pass non-stop, and they kept passing to Bill Swiaki, who eventually got into the end zone with 11 minutes left to make it 20-14. to 14. Then with five minutes left, Columbia would get the ball back, and they would score again to Swiaki again, and they would make the extra point which was all the difference because Army couldn't score again and the final was Columbia 21, Army 20. Army would go 2-1-1 one one in their final four games, losing to Notre Dame and tying Penn to end the season 5-2-2, two two, 
but with their final win over Navy, it started another unbeaten streak, which I will be getting to in the future, like I mentioned. But anyway, back to this streak, which was over at 32, but it was one of the most popular and legendary unbeaten streaks in college football history. During this streak, Army won 30-0-2. They scored 1,299 points, and if they just would have made one extra point in that Columbia game, the streak would have kept going for maybe another week, because they probably would have lost the Notre Dame that year. Almost half of those 1,299 points were scored in that 1944 season when they averaged 56 points a game, which is just insane. During the winning streak, this team scored 40 plus points in 17 games, plus they scored 50 plus points in 10 games, six of those being in 1944. The defense, meanwhile, gave up 100 the defense, meanwhile, gave up 182 points over those 32 games, meaning they gave up 5 points per game. They had 17 shutouts. And their best stretch on defense was, surprisingly, the end of their streak, which was the start of the 1947 season, which was when they went 17 straight quarters without giving up a point. But this three and a half year stretch for Army was fantastic, and it wasn't just Davis and Blanchard, so that's why I wanted to mention a few of the other great players on this team. But if you want to know more about this team, I don't recommend watching the Spirit of West Point movie because it's basically just them chasing girls for about an hour, and then there's maybe 15 minutes or so of football. But I do, however, recommend a book called Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside. It's by Jack Cavanaugh, who also has some great insight into the players. Uh, he also does some interviews, so definitely check out that book. Uh, also, make sure you like this video. Make sure you share this video if you like it, of course. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, please. Tell people if you like this video, share it with your friends. And follow me on Twitter at SportsWronged. Have a fantastic day. Keep checking out this channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell as well so you can figure out when all the uh, new videos are coming out. And have a great day, guys.